Okay, so it's time to talk about this project that I have been hinting at over several posts in the last couple of weeks. And you are either going to like this and be intrigued by it, or you are going to tell me I'm an idiot and I have been conned by a trend. Very simply, I have bought an at-home treadmill. And before you go, you idiot, you won't use it, la di da di da Duh. Let me explain. So I started thinking about this when I decided it was time to sell the bike and the turbo trainer, which I haven't used since 2020. Well, I've tried to use it a couple of times and get back into it. I bought that when it was a trend in 2020 and I did make good use of it that year. And then after that, I didn't. The other trend that I really got into in 2020 was the standing desk. And I have my standing desk. I've been using this all the time since 2020. It's my go-to for work now. That is my office desk. So I stand all day because sitting on a sofa all day is incredibly bad for me. My hips hurt, my legs hurt, and it's just not good for you. We're not designed to sit all day. And I don't even have chairs that are good chairs for sitting in, even if I did. So I thought, well, one of the problems I have is that because I work from home and although I do go out and I always try to go out and do my errands and I try to separate them out to make myself go out every day, it doesn't always happen. And people say, well, you know, you've got to hit X number of steps per day. You've got to hit your 10,000. I don't. Even when I run an errand. If I'm lucky, I hit 4,000 steps. And people say, well, the cleaning jobs must be good exercise. I don't actually think it is that good exercise. On a, a, a cleaning job, I will probably only hit 3,000 steps. And although there is other work involved, it's not enough. And there are days when I don't do any steps at all. Now, I know how my mind works. People say, well, just go out and walk. If I do 10,000 steps a day, that's five miles a day. There are certain things in my life that I have managed to build into my day-to-day -day life quite easily. So I do intermittent fasting. Um, I don't eat until lunchtime, and then I stop eating at about by about, say, six o'clock. I have also got really good at drinking my two litres of water a day. I've got into the, the habit of every time I leave home, I take a bottle of water with me and I make sure that I've finished it by the time I get back. And that's just become part of my life. The standing desk has become part of my daily life. And I know how I work, so I am very bad at routine. I have a very low boredom threshold. So as soon as something becomes a chore, I stop doing it. I can do those small things because they fit very easily into my daily life and they don't impinge on the rest of my daily life. Exercise is more problematic than that. Now I can go out and do X number of steps a day. I'm not really walking enthusiastically a lot of the time because um, cleaning doesn't involve fast paced walking. It doesn't involve walking in straight lines for a long time. There's not a lot of stairs involved. So I'm not really burning many calories. But I also find exercise incredibly boring. I don't enjoy it. It's just not me. I have never been into fitness. Um, I have been through phases of being a gym bunny, but I was using it as an escapism for ba other bad situations. I was using it as a coping mechanism. And even when I went to a gym back in the days when I had the money to have a gym subscription, my go-to was always the treadmill. I loved walking and I did get into jogging for a while and running until I did some damage to my legs because I ran too much. I'm very much an all or nothing and I think if it's not hurting me, um, it's not working. And I get very obsessed by the numbers. That's the other problem. I'm a bit of a number nerd. It's why I have so many spreadsheets and why I manage my finances so well is because I've got this thing about numbers. So I've done counting calories with food. I've done counting steps. <clears throat> I've done counting calories with exercise and I get too obsessed 
and then when it doesn't work um, within a relatively short space of time I just switch off and I've had enough. So what I need if I'm going to get good at doing more exercise I need to find a way to build it into my daily life where I don't think about it and I just do it as a part of my routine and I don't get bored of it. So I was looking at selling the bike and the turbo trainer and I don't know how I found out about these at home treadmills. I think I probably just thought wouldn't it be nice to have a treadmill. I've always wanted a treadmill at home. And then I came up with these walking pads which are the at home version. They're much smaller. You can put them in front of a desk. You can you just plug them into the mains and away you go. They seem really easy to use and easy to maintain. And so I've done a lot of research with this because there are lots of them out there and these are not an impulse purchase. So you can get a walking pad for anything between you know 120 and 600 pounds depending on which one you want depending on what you want from it. I have gone mid-range. I have looked at Amazon, I've looked at the best seller, then I looked at like YouTube. I went onto YouTube and looked for as many walking pad reviews as I could find. I got them from a mixture of people. I got them from people who are fitness experts, uh, I would assume do it for a living. I found influencers doing them and then I found regular people like me buying them and using them at home. So I got a range of different reviews on different models, you know, people would do these are my top five, that sort of thing, or somebody would like, I, this is the one I bought because I saw it recommended and this is what I think of it. I've looked at the pros and the cons of them and it looks like where people have complained about the treadmill that they've bought, it's because they haven't followed all the instructions for when you get it. So it does require a little bit of maintenance. So I've looked at that and I've thought, well, that looks easy enough to do. I can do that. And, and because this is not a cheap purchase, I want to look after it. Now, the ones that I've looked, because I've shopped on Amazon and I've looked for one on Amazon, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. So I'm going to put this through its paces within that time. And then by then I will know whether or not this is going to work. I think it will be easy for me to use and I think this will be easy for me to use every day. What I don't want it to become is a replacement for doing other exercise. I want to use it as a top up. And particularly now that we are in autumn, the weather is changing a lot. There are lots of days where getting outside to exercise is almost impossible. As I've said before, I am not very good at forcing myself to just go out and walk five miles around the block. That's just so boring and such a waste of my time. Going out is one thing. Making myself walk five miles every day for no good particular reason, it just doesn't work for me. So I will still try out, go out and do the hikes when the weather's okay. I will still go out and do my all my errands by foot. Um, and then I will use this as a top up to hit my 10,000 steps. I have a pedometer app on my phone so I know every day what steps I'm walking. And I want to aim for that 10,000 a day. Now, I really do want to lose some weight. I don't know if this is going to help me lose weight. I know that it is going to make me fitter. I know that it is going to um, keep me moving. It's going to be better for my joints. And I know my joints are going to love this. I have the right kind of trainers to wear with it. So I can, I've seen people just kind of walking on it in bare feet or with just slippers on or just regular, you know, indoor shoes sort of thing. I want to do this properly. So, this means that, that when I'm, if I am standing at that desk all day, I might as well be doing something else at the same time. Instantly it's part of routine. So all I've got to do is get used to walking whilst doing things. And I know that some people struggled with actually doing work whilst walking. I think I will struggle with that. I'm not very good at multitasking. But there is plenty of time where I am standing at the computer just watching YouTube or I might be just reading something or listening to a podcast and I can move it around. It's quite small 
it says that you know uh, you can store it under furniture that sort of thing I don't have any furniture that has enough clearance to store anything under so that's going to be no good but I've worked out that with a little bit of jigging around where my standing desk is I've checked the measurements and I've got to get rid of my printer which sits on the floor there but this um, treadmill will fit that length I can't even do the movement uh, that that's the movement I'm looking for. It will fit that length up uh, just past the door. And it's easy to just stand on its end at the end of the day if it's in the way. I'm going to have a shifty round because in front of my standing desk there's a, a, sofa, a single sofa chair and a shelf unit which is separate. And if I can get rid of the shelf unit and move everything up, then I can leave that um, walking pad down and never have to move it and it'll always be there by default that's why I still need to sell the bike which is still behind my door I'm still waiting for that to um, to sell hopefully on eBay once that's gone that little shelf unit in the corner can go behind the door where it used to be before I brought the bike up here and then I will gain back those extra inches of room that I need to be able to leave the walking pad in situ permanently, which is what I need. I need so I can just stand, get on it in the morning and just start walking. But there's all sorts of other things that I want to take into account here. And I want to put this through its paces and see how I get on. So there are different types of um, these treadmills. There are ones with handles. I haven't bothered with the handle because where I want to put it, there's a wall next to me, there's a standing desk in front of me. I can always put my hand out to support me if I need to. I don't need a separate handle for it. Um, the other thing was inclines. So once I've got used to it and I know how to work it, I would like to be able to walk on an incline because that gives you a much better workout. I didn't buy the one with the incline because it was too expensive for me. It wasn't a vast amount more, but I realised that it's very easy to DIY an incline because it has feet on the bottom of this thing and I can create a, an artificial elevation that sits it up. The elevation on the walking pads is only a couple of inches anyway and I can easily do that for myself so once I've got used to walking in it I can just have a permanent elevation on it and then I will be permanently walking slightly uphill which I think will be much better for me and I used to do that with the treadmills in the gym all the time. I was always hitting the, uh, the incline and doing it that walking that way one of the other things that I think will be really really useful with this because we are now in autumn and it's getting colder I do not put my heating on until it gets um, really cold outside but I end up wearing quite a few layers indoors because I'm working indoors and I'm just standing there if I am walking on this treadmill it's going to raise my body temperature and that means I'm going to be warmer here at home with the heating off and it also means that, um, you know, even in the evening, if, if I'm a bit too cold and, uh, and I just need to boost my, uh, my, my body heat a little bit, I can just jump on it for 10 minutes and just do a little bit of that. So I think that's going to help there as well. Uh, my body temperature goes up and down. As soon as I do some sort of exercise, my body temperature goes through the roof. It's what I'm like. It doesn't help that I'm not that fit. Um, and I am carrying some extra weight, so it means that when I start doing exercise, my body then has to work. So I think that will be really useful. These walking pads are not for running on, but I don't want to do running anyway, because um, I did some um, damage to my legs through doing too much running back in 2021 when I tried to get really into running again and went from nothing to everything. And I've tried running again since, and I... I think I would very easily end up doing the same damage again. So I just want to be able to get um, a good walking speed on and vary it as well. So there's a good control on this thing. It has an LED light on the front of the machine, but you also have a remote so that you can operate it that way. And I think it's it's worth the experiment. It's worth finding out. This is really going to be my last ditch attempt at building exercise into my daily routine without me having to think about it. I know how I work and people go, oh, just get up, move around. And it's so easy to say. It's like telling people who need to lose weight. Well, just eat less and move around more. It's so easy to say when you don't have a problem. This is what my dad says. You know, I complain that I've put on a bit, a bit of weight this year and I have put on a bit of weight this year. And he just says, well, just 
eat less and move around more. That's easy for my dad to say. My dad has never been an ounce overweight in his entire life. He's tall, he's very slim, my brother is the same, tall and thin as a stick. My mum's never had a weight problem. I got the weight gene. I am not like anyone else in my immediate family. I think it comes from my grandparents. My dad's parents were, they were slim when they were young, but they were overweight when they were older. So I don't know whether that's a gene thing or just an age thing. But my parents are like nearly 80 and still stick thin people. They haven't put on any weight. My dad didn't slump into being overweight when he retired. Nothing really changed. And my dad can't even walk around that well anymore because he had a hip replacement a few years ago, which has been great. But he also has problems with his feet. He has collapsed arches in his feet. So he really struggles to walk. So my dad sits around most of the day now and he still stick thin. It drives me mad. I couldn't do that. I could not do that. So it's easy for people to say, oh, we'll just eat less and move around more. But it doesn't work like that. Human psychology does not work like that. So... I think that this is going to be the way forward for me and I've thought about this for a while because this is not a cheap purchase. This is going to cost me £189 and although I don't have an enormous income, I do earn more than I spend but I'm also incredibly careful with my money so all my spare money goes into savings accounts and that's why I can afford to do this. Um, as I say, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee on it, so I'm not stuck with it, as long as I give it a really good test as soon as it arrives. Um, the other thing that takes the sting out of it is that I have a new credit card, which I've got nine months of no payment on. So I don't have to pay for anything that's on the card until next May. So that means this £189 is not going to hit me until next May which is great I also got a five pound voucher Amazon sent me a um, like a promotional five pound off and I applied that to to it so and I also got free delivery so it's actually cost me a hundred and I think it's a hundred and eighty four pounds ninety nine or something anyway so I've done it I've bought it I bought it this afternoon after much consideration and it's only because I have the 30 day money back guarantee that I've gone with this because I have time to reflect on it if I'm not happy with it. So it's on its way. And when it arrives, I am going to do a whole like unboxing thing. I don't do unboxings for clout. Um, I want to do this because I want to show you the entire process of me getting this thing because there will be some of you out there that can afford to do this and would like to have this available at home but just need the advice. So I've watched a ton of videos about testing these out. What are the good ones? What are the bad ones? The one that I've bought is called the Sperax. It is the best seller on Amazon and all the reviews that I have seen on YouTube and I have read about in magazines, this does seem to come out as a pretty good model. So there's that. The only thing that was never discussed on the videos, and when I googled this I did find lots of conversations about it, um, so I know that other people have thought about it, is how much is this going to cost to run? I have lots of tight budgets. One of my obsessions is getting my electricity bill down. Do I want something that's going to eat up a ton of electric? So I've Googled how much these cost to run. It's very vague because there are different models, there are different sizes, there are different um, energy consumptions. These things can eat up anything between, I think it's 300 and 900 watts an hour. And it depends on how much I use it. There will be weeks when I use it a lot. There will be weeks when I don't use it at all. Like for instance, when I go, around, go away to my parents, um, I won't use it at all. So it's going to be very on and off. So I need to test within this 30 days I've got it and see if I can afford to run this. So we are now in mid, almost mid-October. The energy bills have already gone up. Um, I was away recently for two weeks at my parents, so I've been doing some tests on how much energy the house uses in different capacities. 
So whilst I'm away, I can work out how much energy is used by appliances that I can't switch off. So I had one LED light on timer. I'm not going to count that because they use like pence per year. I also have the under counter um, fridge, which belongs to the flat, which is the fridge I'm stuck with. And because I have no room for a freezer in my flat, I bought two tabletop freezers, the sort of thing you would find in a caravan or on a canal boat. I have two of them. I bought one for when I first moved in because I knew I would have no freezer and there is no freezer with the flat anyway because there's no room for it. And then after a few years, I bought another one. So I have a tower of them. And I've looked at the energy ratings for them both and got an approximate. It doesn't look like they cost much to run each year, but mine are second hand. I don't know how old they are. They're probably less efficient and they are certainly less efficient than uh, of, uh, most of the modern fridge freezers that you can get now. So I'm probably not running at a great efficiency, but I'm working with what I've got. So one of the things I started to look at was if I switch the freezers off, how much energy can I save and I can, can I balance that out against the treadmill? So I Googled a lot of this and a lot of people were saying, it's not worth switching off your freezer. But a lot of people were looking at quite modern fridge freezers and I think you have to do it on a case by case basis. So I did uh, my meter readings before I went away to my parents and then I took one as soon as I got back so that I know how much energy is being eaten by the fridge and the two freezers that I have whilst I'm away and that will give me a good approximation of what those use on their own. So I know how much energy I use in normal times because I do my meter readings every month so I know on a normal basis of just being at home, having the TV on, charging laptops, phones, I am quite low in terms of my usage, I very rarely use my oven, I only use that at most once a week, depending on what I'm cooking. I only use my washing machine once a week. I avoid using most of the lights in the flat, I don't need them. Um, I have the lights that I use regularly as LEDs. The, the most energy that's probably getting used in my flat, apart from my fridge freezers, is charging the laptop, charging my phone, putting the TV on. That's the bulk of it. So I should be able to get a good idea once I have this treadmill in place and I'm using it. I will do an energy meter reading the day that I start to use it. I will then test it over the course of a normal usage week. Um, usage being probably heavier now at this time of year as the weather changes and as it's harder to get out and, and do like normal walking. Um, but obviously there are days where I might be out for half a day doing a clean. There is one clean that I do every fortnight, so every fortnight my usage might be different. Although I never hit 10,000 steps doing a clean, there's no chance. If I hit 3,000 3, steps on any day doing a clean, that is it. So I'm going to probably need it every day. There will be hike days when I don't need it because I do well over 10,000 steps on a hike. There will day, be days when I just use it as a top up for steps not done. There will be days when I use it because it's a lot colder at home and I just need to boost my body temperature. So this has multiple potential possibilities as my normal day-to-day -day exercise, as a top up for when I don't do enough and um, for keeping warm <laughs> amongst other things. So that's my overview of why I have decided to do this and and I know there will be lots of comments from people saying I made a really stupid decision, it's a lot of money, it'll be a waste. There will be people who think it's a good idea. There will be people who have their own and will say, yeah, I've been using mine for ages. There will be people who want to do this but need to know what it is, what they're getting into. Because when you're buying something like this that's expensive and you don't know what you're letting yourself in for, you want to see other people, you want to see honest reviews. And that's why I blitzed YouTube and pulled out a ton of videos about this. I watched loads. I really like doing my research on things like this. So that's the update. That's what I'm doing. I have bought a walking pad, which is an at-home treadmill. 
and in my next post um, it will have arrived I will show you setting it up using it and then I will continue to do updates over the course of that 30 days to let you know how I get on with it what the pros and cons are whether I think this is for me um, and I don't want to have any expectation that I'm going to lose weight. I think that doing 10,000 steps a day, five miles a day, will make a difference, provided I'm not just dawdling on it. I want to do proper walking, not just window shopping, speed walking. But of course, they've got the energy to worry about. How much is it going to cost to run? There's all these other things that I don't know until I've had it for a bit and I've been able to test it out. So that's coming. So I hope you found this interesting. You might find it useful. It um, has the potential to solve several issues in my day-to-day -day life. It may not solve any of them. It might solve things that I never even considered. So keep watching. I will, I will turn this into a playlist when I have uploaded a second video. Actually, I'll probably just set up a playlist anyway, so that you can find the updates easily on this, and it just makes things easier to find. I divide all my videos up into playlists, so there's one for Universal Credit, there's one for Day in the Life, there's one for Frugal Cooking, there's one for Hiking on Walks and stuff like that, and it just makes things easier to find. I make the playlists to make my videos easy for you to find if there is a particular subject, uh, but I think a lot of people don't see them. So I'm saying now, all my videos have playlists. If you're looking for a particular subject, go and find the playlist. It's there somewhere. That's my update. Wish me luck. And um, another video coming up when my new toy has arrived. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.